Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Wednesday, November 1st, 2023. And once again, we're very fortunate to have with us somebody, a person, a man of courage, liberty, freedom, peace, and justice, Judge Andrew Napolitano. And when I say how fortunate we are, particularly in these times that we're in, with World War III having begun and our freedoms being robbed from us, and at the same time, while they're robbing us of our freedom, they're doing everything they can to stop us from being free and stopping freedom of speech. And they're spying on us, watching us, and doing everything they can to control us as these maniacs in charge keep launching wars, killing people, stealing our money, and ruining life on earth. Judge, thanks for being here today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for the generous introduction. Well, uh, Gerald, the terrible, dark times. Every time we have these happy, because we enjoy working together, uh, meetings uh, on Wednesday and talk about how bad the world is, every week it's worse, worse than it was last week. And that was worse than the week before. Terrible, terrible, uh, dark times, uh, weak American uh, leadership people willing to be led around by the nose, people more interested in Taylor Swift and her boyfriend than American dollars killing people. Uh, terrible state of affairs, but we got to keep pounding away uh, at uh, limited government, personal liberty, and peace. I, I, I believe there's never been a better time than now. There are a lot of people who are disgusted with what's going on, and I'm not just saying that you know, as a, a thought. It's a fact when you look at the numbers polls by Gallup poll, where people look at politicians lower than they do use car salesmen. So there's really been a time, this is the time now to really to have some uh, dramatic change. And again, you know, it's, it's either occupy peace or die in war, as we say. A judge, you have an article coming out tomorrow, and it really, it relates to what we're talking about in so many different ways, and how we're, we're losing our freedom and peace. And it's, it's about... Uh, the great man in Moscow, when the Trump administration obtained an indictment of Edward Snowden for violation of the Espionage Act of 1917, many of us who believe that the Fourth Amendment means what it says, we're deeply critical of the government, and we remain so today. So please explain. Well, Edward Snowden uh, is the former... Um uh, a contractor, outside contractor working with the NSA. He's also a former CIA agent uh, who took two oaths, one to keep secret whatever his uh, political bosses told him to keep secret, and the other to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. What, what do you do when the two oaths clash? What do you do when he learns that the very government entity that he's working for was engaged in the most massive violation of civil liberties in American history. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the NSA, the National Security uh, Agency, spying on every single American, capturing every single keystroke on every single mobile device and desktop, capturing every word and syllable and every breath on every uh, telephone conversation into, out of, and within uh, the United States, all without a search warrant, all without suspicion, all without probable cause, all without targeting anybody. It's just spying on everyone. When he released this, he did so in Hong Kong to a select group of journalists and then the government tried to arrest him and he made his way to Moscow where the U.S. government couldn't go. As he's landing in Moscow, the State Department switched off his passport, which told the Moscow uh, people not to let him in, whereupon he said, well, I'd rather be stateless than voiceless. Today he is a dual Russian and American citizen and the model of personal courage in a free society for exposing what the government did. I once interviewed him with Ron Paul, the three of us. Wow. Ron and I were in Texas 
uh, Snowden was on a, f- a huge flat screen. We we're in front of an audience of a few thousand uh, in Moscow. And I made the argument that what he did is absolutely protected free speech and that I believed the court would accept that argument and the indictment against him would be thrown out. And he said, Judge, I agree with you. But in order to do that, I have to come back into the United States. And I'm not so sure how I'll be treated by the government. (laughs) Now, fast, this is the Trump administration, which indicted him. And then Trump himself, in an an unguided moment, said, oh, that guy Snowden, uh, he should be executed. And then some of us spoke to the president. And then he did a, a 180. And he said to me, should I pardon him? I said, yes, you absolutely should pardon him. And you should ask your uh, government to dis- instruct the DOJ to dismiss the indictment. Well, it didn't happen. Small world, Trump now stands indicted of the very same charge, the very same statute, the very same section of that statute that his DOJ charged Snowden with. Well, as they say, payback's a bitch, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Listen, I don't blame Trump. He didn't make these decisions, and he had the good sense to change his mind. And I believe, I'm not saying I want him to be president. It depends who he's running against. And I believe that if he is elected, he will pardon Assange and Snowden. But the, the Snowden lesson uh, is very instructive to us because it shows what big government will do. Uh, All of this is post 9-11. All this is instigated by the worst president in the post-World War II era, George W. Bush, Iran, Iraq, uh, the Department of Homeland Security, the Patriot Act, mass, mass, mass spying, spying on everybody. Yep, they have their FISA court. It's just a subterfuge. They go to the FISA court so they can claim they're going to a court to get a warrant. In fact, they're spying on everybody. So in 2006, and I'm sorry, this is such a long answer, Gerald. No, no, go on. uh, Bush uh, and the Republican, Republican Congress enacted legislation that required every uh, telecom service provider and every internet service provider to allow the federal government to be physically present at their mainframes. And today, the federal government, the NSA, guarded by armed guards carrying AR-15s, is physically present at every mainframe. You get off the elevator at the wrong floor at AT AT&T's headquarters in San Francisco, you'll be met by people pointing what look like machine guns at you. Welcome to America. Welcome to George W. Bush's uh, America. What are they doing there? They are gathering uh, communications in real time. Every keystroke, you think you deleted something, you haven't. Every keystroke uh, pressed and every uh, syllable articulated in the hands of the federal government, all in violation of the Fourth Amendment. That's what Snowden exposed. Well, again... You know, how can you criticize them spying on everyone when you look at the great results that have they've accomplished? I mean, really, what the hell have they accomplished by spying on everybody, stealing out with trillions of dollars to keep making this happen? And what are the results? Nothing. Nothing. Well, you know, it's even worse than that. They, there is so much information overload. So as an example... Uh, the largest library in the country is the Library of Congress. Uh, if you print it on a piece of paper, all the data that the NSA accumulates uh, in one year, it would fill 27 times the capacity, the storage capacity of the Library of Congress. Now, no human being, no algorithm, no AI can go through that and look for the dangerous people. So it's just the assertion of power over us to keep us under their thumbs. No national security purpose is seriously served by this. Right now, a section of the FISA Act is about to expire, the one that legally allows them to spy on uh, foreign communications. And of course, they're, they're saying, well, if Israel had this power, the Hamas attack would have occurred. Well, this is insane. 
First of all, Israel spies on everything Hamas did. Israel was asleep at the switch. Netanyahu was asleep at the switch. We all know it. Secondly, this has nothing, nothing. The Hamas attack has nothing to do with keeping Americans safe no. by spying on us. Spying on us does not keep us safe. It just keeps us less free. Again, they've accomplished nothing. Right. Nothing. Homeland security. What a bunch of bullshit. Homeland security. What the hell we need these clowns for? You know, what, are they, what have they accomplished? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Not one say, look, look what we did. And this is why we're doing it. Never said that because they've come up with nothing. And again, going back to what you said about Netanyahu, I, I, the data coming out is showing that they knew about this. It was going to happen uh, with Hamas. And we had judge since Netanyahu, again, people have no idea about this. The average person, all they do is like you said, they know about Taylor Swift. Oh, and how about that actor that died from what the hell do I care? An actor that died. Yeah, I got my sister who I love so dearly is dying. Is it going to make the news? Oh, no, but an actor died. And, and that's the big story on the Cartoon News Network, CNN and the rest. If you want to talk about that, put it on People Magazine or something like that. So going back to what I'm saying is that the people have no idea about the Netanyahu government and that there were 39 weeks in a row of mass protests because of his Judicial Reform Act. 39 weeks. And we were writing about it since he got into office. These are just a few of the articles. Just this wow. year. Just this year about how there were protests going on, about how they were slaughtering more Palestinians, how they were stealing more land, on and on and on, and it was all building up to this. So Netanyahu was on his way out. Not my language, the language from the Times of Israel, Jerusalem Post, Hahadetz. There was a civil war going on in Israel before the Hamas attack. That is not your phrase. That's the phrase of the president of Israel who said a civil war is coming and he meant a violent one. Yep. So what we said, when all else fails, they take you to war. And that's exactly what he did. They took the people to war. All the protests were forgotten. They all united. They do this all the time. When all else fails, they take you to war. What followed the Great Depression? War. The World War II. What followed the dot-com bust? Oh, the war on terror. Right. People have no idea about this. Oh, and you mentioned, going back to your article about Snowden, oh, 1917, huh? It was a wonderful time. This is under the Rose of the uh, Woodrow Wilson uh, administration. And the most, uh, the most repressive. Yep. The most repressive. I mean, Wilson arrested college students for reciting the Declaration of Independence out loud in front of draft offices. And his argument was, well, if people listen to this stuff that Jefferson wrote, this stuff that Jefferson wrote, uh, they might be deterred from registering for the draft. So we arrested the students. What about the First Amendment, Mr. President? Oh, the First Amendment only prohibits Congress from interfering with freedom of speech. It doesn't prohibit the president. <laughs> This is the former professor of constitutional law at Princeton University making this argument, which if made on a law exam, you'd get an F. Yeah. And you went, you, of course, you graduated Princeton. Yes. And this is the same piece of scum crap that gave us World War I. Right. The Federal Reserve. Federal income tax. Right. The popular election of senators emasculating the states as states. And he created the administrative state, a government by experts. The government will keep your food safe. The government will keep the booze safe. Trust the government. Remember Ronald Reagan, the nine most dangerous words in the English language. Hi, I'm from the government. I'm here to help you. Yep. And going back to 1917. 
because now we have the Israel war going on. This is your Trends Journal when it used to be a quarterly. You mentioned 2006 before. This is from 2006. While the seeds of Crusades 2000 have been planted in full view of the world, and all those watching could have anticipated the eventual harvest, the memories of what had happened and what would occur have never have been have been fogged by rigid ideology, fanatical religiosity, patriotic fervor, government propaganda, and ulterior motives. We go on to write. Regardless of what England's reasons or intentions were, self-serving or otherwise, Crusades 2000 was set in motion by the 1917 Balfour Declaration that laid the foundation for Israel. Quote, His Majesty's government views with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object, end quote. That's the king. This mm -hmm. is his majesty. We'll tell you what to do. What do you I don't think? Know how, I don't know how this uh, this ends. I mean... Uh, I mean, but just stay on that for a second, if you will. What right does this clown have to say that His Majesty, the, the establishment of a... In Palestine. Well, Gerald... The national they, home for the Jewish people. Who the they, hell is he to say? And why the Jewish people so special that they should get a national home? Uh, is their religion the king, the better than king, your uh, religion? My religion is somebody else's religion. The king thought he could do whatever he wanted. I mean, it, it's 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 uh, almost a joke by uh, contemporary standards, and people um, bowed down uh, to that. And Woodrow Wilson went along uh, with it, and so did the heads of state. There were many of them about to roll uh, in Europe. It's uh, it unleashed. Um, fanatical religious uh, violence that killed hundreds of thousands uh, living peacefully in Palestine yeah. and drove a million people uh, from their homeland. They destroyed over 400 towns and uh, villages and cities. And genocide is being committed. Could you imagine if, if Gaza was filled with Jewish people and the Palestinians would, were bombing it to ruins and killing thousands and thousands of people. Oh, would it be so, so terrible? But you could wipe the Palestinians out. They don't count. Here, and talking about a religious war. This is from, again, Jerusalem Post. So, video. Netanyahu invokes, you ready? Biblical prophecy as Israel launches invasion of Gaza. This is his, this is now they're quoting him. Our war against Hamas is a test for all humanity. It is a struggle between axis of evil, between Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas, and the axis of freedom and progress. You ready? We are the people of light. They are the people of darkness. As prime minister, I am responsible for guaranteeing the future of this country. And now my role is to lead all Israelis, the state of Israel and the people of Israel to an overpowering victory. It is now time to come together for one purpose, to storm ahead, to achieve victory and joined with the joint forces of a profound belief in our justness and the profound belief in the eternity of the Jewish people, we shall realize, you ready? The prophecy of Isaiah. There will no longer be stealing at your borders and your gates will be glory. 
I got to believe your prophecy of Isaiah. Who the hell are you to shove this crap down my throat? Well, the sad thing about it, Gerald, is um, what you just read uh, is bought and accepted by 95% uh, of American public officials. I mean, according to Ritter, um, Netanyahu has been quoted boasting that he owns the Congress and he owns the White House, not in the literal sense, but in the, uh, in the political sense. There will be next to no opposition to giving uh, the, the Israelis almost uh, whatever they wanted, whatever they want. Yep. It's not, it's not even subject to debate in, uh, in polite American society. No. And they just passed this, they, they, they did with the Congress just, uh, we're going to send them what, $14 billion or something? Well, it hasn't passed yet. Uh, they're arguing how to divide it. Uh, old Joe wants 103 billion he wants 68 for ukraine and 14 for israel and the rest for taiwan and something for the border wall uh but the lindsey grahams uh in the world want more for israel i don't know if i used this line before from tom woods no matter no matter who you vote for you end up with john mccain yeah <laughs> when it comes to war when it comes to war and this is going back a few weeks ago lindsey graham the little clown boy who loves war Quote, we're in a religious war here, and I'm for Israel. Do whatever the hell you have to do to level the place. Well, they, they, don't, they, they, don't believe, they don't believe, just as uh, Woodrow Wilson didn't believe in the declaration, they don't believe in the declaration. They don't believe all men are created equal. They believe that the Palestinians are subhuman. Yep. Uh, they believe that they can characterize any group they want as subhuman and justify the eradication of that group. That's the same ideology that uh, the Hitlerian uh, Nazi crew embraced in 1933 with their Nuremberg laws. The you Jewish know, people, the, the Israelis should be the last people on the planet uh, to embrace something like that. Now, when I say the Israelis, I mean the Israeli government. Yeah. There is a huge portion of Israeli society which is secular, which doesn't believe in this uh, nonsense. Oh, yeah. But the fanatics are the ones who run the government. And the fanatic in chief is Bibi Netanyahu. Yeah, this is whole page ed. New York Times. Right. Jews say ceasefire now. These are Jewish voices for peace. So, yeah, it's not... It's not the Jewish people. It's the, the government in charge. And this clown boy, this arrogant Netanyahu said, as I quoted, as prime minister, I'm responsible for guaranteeing the future of the country. Oh, you're responsible? We're just a piece of shit, the rest of us? No, I'm in charge. I'll tell you what to do. And that's every damn government now. I'm president. I'm chancellor. I'm a piece of crap. I'll tell you what to do. You follow my orders. Right. And you ready for this? This is from, yep, that's our T-shirt. That's the way I feel about it, the politicians. Are people buying that T-shirt? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here, this is from anti-war that just went up. Leaked Israeli intelligence ministry document proposes complete ethnic cleansing of Gaza. A leaked document drafted by the Israeli intelligence military ministry proposes the ethnic cleansing of the approximately 2.3 million Palestinians living in Gaza Strip. The document dated October 13th was published by the Hebrew language website S-I-C-H-A, M-E-K-O-M-I-T. And the Israeli government has confirmed its authenticity. According to the Times of Israel, they're saying that it only represents, quote, initial thought, initial thoughts. Anyway, it goes on. Right here. They want ethnic cleansing. Wow. Well, you know, Israel um, will need to save itself because if this continues... Uh, the Arab world and the region uh, will react. President Erdogan of Turkey 
has called Netanyahu a war criminal. He's called uh, Hamas liberation uh, fighters. Uh, King Jordan, uh, uh, King, I forget his name, the King of Jordan has snubbed uh, Joe Biden. So the Israelis are in very, very dangerous uh, uh, territory. And Netanyahu won't listen to anybody. I'm telling all my Jewish friends, do everything you can for peace. And I'm telling everybody everywhere, do anything you can for peace. Any way you want to do it, do it. You know, here's the cover of this week's Trends Journal, by the way. Well, that is effectively what they say. Right? Yes. Yes. These are the people in charge of our life. We World War III began with, with the Ukraine war, and now people are repeating what we've been saying now that the Israeli war is going on. That world, right. We did this two days before the Russian invasion. Again, totally opposed to the Russian invasion, totally opposed to what Hamas did, totally understand why each one happened. And if people don't do something for peace, we're going to die in war because we have evil demonic people in charge. Again, by their deeds, you shall know them. And, and Netanyahu is saying that they're just going to keep fighting. It's going to be a long war and we're going to keep doing it. And again, the article came out, leaked Israeli intelligence ministry document proposes complete ethnic cleansing of Gaza. So judge, thank you so much for all you do. And everybody, please go to, you got to see the the people that he has on his show. They're sensational. And what he does, judging freedom, it, it's it, you don't want to miss it. One great person after another that the mainstream media doesn't have on, that he has on, that knows the facts, the information from all sides in the sense that it's not who you like, what you wish for, and what you want. It's what is. And he brings the what is to your face. So go to Judging Freedom and put your money when your heart and mind is and donate to Occupy Peace. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Gerald. All the best.